So, welcome to our yarden. Oh wow, look at this. Yes, we've, uh, we've basically tried to cram in as much as we can into what is, I think, six metres by about three and a half metres. You've crammed in a lot, Molly, lots of things. We do happen. try, yes. So, um, how long have you been here? How long have you been working on this garden? We've been here about nine years. Yeah, but the garden's been through a few iterations right. before looking like this. Okay. Um, but when we first started, we weren't gardeners. So now, um, since we became gardeners, we yeah. now get access to a lot of plants. So yeah. we needed somewhere Babies. to put them. <laughs> exactly. So that's why we started the garden like this. So it was a, a few years of living here before we, we, we really got going yeah. on the garden. What did it look like when you moved in then? When we first moved in, it's really hard to remember now, but we, so all of this was just grass and mm. I think someone probably mowed it once a month or something because it's a rental house as well, right. so we don't own the garden. We used to do it with scissors, I think. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have a mower back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was a patch of grass, just a rectangle, a narrow path down the middle, and then this raised bed on the side here wasn't here, okay. but there, were, there was a mini border, I'd say, about two foot wide all the way along this wall. This compost bin didn't exist. Mm. Yeah, and that was it, basically. Right. Right? There wasn't much else going on that I can remember. So we've made quite a lot of changes yeah. for a rental. Yeah, should we have a look at some of the changes then? Yeah. yeah let's do it. A little walk around. So should we start with this? What's happening here? This, I'm probably the proudest of this. This is our allittlement. Allittlement. Because as well as for the wildlife, we also wanted plants for us and things that we can eat. Yeah, uh, that's we yeah. like We like <laughs> yeah. eating. Yeah. So this year we've got some courgettes. They're quite oh. tiny at the moment, but they're, they're already flowering. Uh, some chard, and there are some beans ready and waiting to go in up our bean teepee, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. And we, can't, we can't sort of move on before we just comment on a little mint, because that, <laughs> <laughs> that is a good word. Is that your word? It is my word, yeah. yes. Word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, how big is this? Yeah. <laughs> to call it an allotment would have been a bit uh, cheeky, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, we, we just really think that you can grow food in any space. Yeah, a windowsill it. you can yeah. grow herbs on. So this is actually quite big isn't it like this is a large area yeah well garden, and then if so... you take into account all the herbs we've got as well because this right. this half of the border is a herb bed mm. and then we've got so many herbs in pots here as well yeah. that you know because they're the things you want to grab for the for the kitchen straight mm. away yeah. and we don't want to have to go up our allotment to pick a little bit of mint or something yeah. so just having it right by the back door is is ideal That's perfect. and they will all flower eventually as well when we stop picking them and <laughs> yeah. the invertebrates just go mad, mad for the flowers oh, for mint so, flowers mm. they yeah. absolutely love them we've already know. got mint moths they oh, also right. love it nice. and i shouldn't like them because they do decimate the leaves but i love them. they're so beautiful they're very and, pretty moths. yeah i love them What's happening over here? Got a little seating area, important. Yeah, we, so while we're, we've obviously crammed as many plants into every possible space, we also wanted a garden that we could actually use. Mm. And we do have mates over, we have barbecues, we needed somewhere to sit. I think in any garden, it's really important to have it for yourself as well. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's excellent for the wildlife, but we actually want to sit out here and we often yeah. do have tea in the morning and listen to all the invertebrates flying around. And it doubles up as, as a, just a, a useful bench. Mm. So when we're growing on um, small plants, you know, little pots of seedlings and things, we can use the bench to, to store them on because yeah. that gets mm. the sun most of the day. But okay. also the pièce de résistance. Oh. Underneath here, can you see? I mean, I think some people might say this is just junk. <laughs> this is actually on purpose. We've got a wood pile, which is absolutely teeming full of all kinds of spiders, wood lice, oh goodness, you name it, centipedes down there as well. Um, and then we've got this rock pile and the sun actually sort of comes up and across behind us. Mm. These get really warm and some of the wolf spiders actually use them to bask on. Oh, so that is actually all on purpose yeah. and we didn't want it just to be an empty void. Yeah, because that could have easily just been nothing and not a non-space, but you've just taken that and turned it into even more habitat. Exactly. Yeah. And we don't touch it. You can see all the cobwebs. Mm. Um, so it's really undisturbed. And yeah, I think the wildlife really appreciates that, especially yeah. in such a, a tiny area. It's sturdy. It's heavy duty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is definitely here to last. 
Yeah, well, we do feed the local sparrow population with this. Oh, so they're hungry little monkeys, aren't they? They are, and oh. messy. They're, yeah, we had to actually put this table up because they were dropping seed and it was just creating a sort of meadow. It was a wheat it. field under here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they do eat some of it, so... So we get, yeah, sparrows. We call them the spadgers. So we get, <laughs> yeah, we get um, lots of uh, goldfinches as yeah. well, yeah, and occasionally a chiff-chaff comes into the garden, oh, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, that's nice. And yeah. the reason why we have this stick going up here, <laughs> which looks a bit odd, yeah. but the, um, uh, all the birds, they come in and they perch on the top of the stick so they can look down into the garden and make sure there's no cats or anything in there yeah. before they actually come in. Yeah. We've also got a little, um, just in that <laughs> silver bowl up there, we, we have uh, it's basically a mini bird bath. So we just fill it up with fresh water and inside is a, is a rock so the birds mm. can come in and they can perch on it and then you, yeah. know, you see them splashing around. So oh, that's there's nice. a bit of fresh the, water for them as well. Mostly yeah. the wood pigeons that come and do oh, that. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Just, just flying in and destroying everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay there then. <laughs> that to stay that there. does. I mean, but, you've got a ledge on it, luckily. I yeah. Suppose. Well, actually, the pigeons are quite good because when the sparrows make all their mess, the pigeons mm. come and clean it up. That's yeah. Nice. They are. Yeah. They are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what have you got growing down here? Well, this is going to be our field of sunflowers. We did this last year as well. I sort of overplant them, actually. I put slightly too many than you, you might often see, but I think they look fantastic when there's a lot together and mm. they really do like come up to here and just wave in the sun and uh, it's absolutely wonderful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we stake them all so they stay upright. Yeah, And yeah. then the flower heads, when they're on there, are absolutely great for all the pollinators. But, of course, then it's free bird food, so we cut the heads off at the end and just leave them on the on the table and yeah. yeah they keep us going for a good couple of weeks and in front of that we've got some borage and up this the pole here we grow sweet peas and, mm. and things for a bit yeah. later in the year too mm. yes and we also a couple of years now planted this hazel tree because having a native deciduous tree in even in a small place at space it's possible mm. and this is hopefully going to go on to provide hazelnuts for the birds possibly the squirrel though because we yeah. do get one coming <laughs> so it depends on who gets here first um and also the leaves are really good food for lots of our invertebrates and things so yeah and I mean, flowers as well early and in the, the flowers year. Yeah. yeah really good how big will this get then do you think well, the, the benefit of the hazel is that we can restrict its size because mm. obviously it is a small garden. Um, if we left it, it can get to 10 metres, but right. what we're going to do is keep it coppiced. Mm. So every three years or so, we're going to cut it right down to the ground, basically, yeah. and, yeah, restrict its growth. Yeah. And that encourages it to put lots of... The, the more you cut them, the bigger the leaves get as well, so you get a really big, fresh bunch of leaves, which, are, which is yeah. great for all the, uh, the moths and the larvae that, yeah. that eat them. Oh, that's lovely. So tell me about your cold frame then. Well, this is actually, these were the windows from next door. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So we saved them from being chucked out and we used a bit of scrap wood. And it does two things. In the summer, it's just a place to keep all our cuttings and, mm. and uh, yeah, other bits and bobs that just would get in the way. But in the winter, we've got a few plants that aren't hardy. So it's just enough protection in there to keep them over the winter, which mm. is really good. Um, but yeah, so it was just made with, with the scrap and then it just sits there and yeah, when we get all the cuttings and things, we can pot them up and then put them elsewhere around the garden as well. I'm quite and obsessed with cuttings, it has yeah. to be said. <laughs> I am being told off quite regularly about how many plants we have on the go. But my, in my defence, we a lot of the plants in this garden are from cuttings that we've taken. Yeah. Because um, I just don't think gardening needs to cost the earth. Because yeah, it can be so expensive if you let it. Oh, you know, oh yeah. 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 As long as you're willing to... Um, like take a bit of time over making a garden and mm. actually starting small is really really good mm. um so that's my argument for that yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that sounds like a good argument to me you can't argue with that yeah <laughs> and then in the corner just there yeah, we've got one of, we've got three dead wood piles in the garden right so we've got the one under the bench which you've seen uh and this one again it's just cuttings that we've we've had lying around some there's some pear in there and some cherry and some oak and, uh, yeah, the number of invertebrates that live in there is, is amazing. Yeah. Um, it does provide a home for slugs and snails as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a home for all the things that eat the slugs and snails, That's so it. you need to have that balance yeah. in the garden. Yeah. Where are we now? Tell me about this bit. Well, this is the herbaceous border. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I do like to call it that, yeah. yes. <laughs> 
Um, no, I'm very proud of my herbaceous border. I yeah. think it's lovely. We've crammed as many plants as you, as you can get into any space, I think. Yeah. Um, it's always a work in progress as well. So we, we, we do often chop and change what's going on in here. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're professional gardeners, but we get things wrong all the time. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, the amount of things we're... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just yesterday I, I pulled out some GMs. They just weren't working, but, you know, I potted them up and we can put mm. them elsewhere. But, yeah, it's just trial and error with these things, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And what we do and what we tell other people to do is to really notice whether or not you have gaps in flowering time. So over the last eight years, we've just spent a lot of time in the garden and noticed when things aren't flowering and when there isn't enough nectar and pollen around. And we fix the problem when we notice there's a, there's a bit of a gap. So that's yeah. why things change all the time, isn't it? Well, it's only a small area, really. So yeah. we can't fill it completely so it looks absolutely spectacular in spring because then we wouldn't have space for anything else. So yeah. you need to just have a, a little bit of everything so yeah. you get that flowering over the whole year. Mm. Uh, so it starts early. We've got some uh, winter aconites come up and some crocus and then into daffodils. And then as they die down, all the rest of the stuff comes up with mm. peonies and, and the flowers later in the year. Um, yeah, and then we've also got this Physocarpus behind us, which is great for shelter over the winter as well. So yeah. there's, there's lots of places for, for bugs to hide out yeah. um, as we come to the end of the year because we don't, we're not super um, tidy. You know, we don't cut everything back straight away at the end of the year. Yeah. So we leave all of this standing as we come around into the autumn mm. and all over the winter. So it provides great shelter for things. Yeah. One of my favourite things, though, this is a new addition of this year, is this little pulmonaria just down here. And pulmonaria or lungwort is really, really good forage um, for bees that emerge early in the year. And right. I was actually having a very cold cup of tea, I think back in March, sitting in the garden and noticed that hairy-footed flower bees were coming into the garden not having anything that they wanted to eat mm. and then flying off. Oh. So we put this in and it was in obviously flowering at the time and they stayed and they, they used it oh, until they about two weeks. They did. Yeah. Oh. And they stay, yeah, I think they were still flying. The females were still flying about two weeks ago. They were still coming every morning. And Pulmonaria is their favourite food. Oh, they yes. go absolutely crazy for yeah. it. Yeah, they Plant love it. Plant it and they will come. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a great sign of spring. You know spring's here when the yeah. hairy-footed flower bees are out. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That's good to know. I'm going to get fancy some of that then. Yeah. Um, what else have you got in here then? We've got a soft shield fern, Polystichum cetiferum, which I'm a bit of a fernophile or a pteridophile. So yeah, we always, we'd love to have ferns in the garden. Mm. It's a native, lots and lots of spiders will use that to build their web between the leaves mm. and they seem yeah. to really like it down there, don't they? If you poke your, your, your face in, okay. it is absolutely <laughs> full of web. I mean, it's great. Um, That's why Ben's beard's always full of like Yeah, bugs. I need to comb it a lot afterwards, yeah. <laughs> Did find a snail in it once. You found a snail in it? True fact. That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that a snail? It was only a little one. <laughs> 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 it's crawling a lot. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> That's still good work. Yeah, <laughs> well, the snails that I do find, I put then onto our hoster because oh, they love yeah, to eat that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then we've got, this is a plant called Veronica Astrum. Yeah. And in a week or so, it will have tall spikes of purple flowers. Mm. Um, and because they're sort of a, a, almost a compound flower, they are absolutely wonderful for pollinators because mm. e each spike has 100 or, you know, tiny flowers in it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they come out purple and they, they last for a really long time as well. So they're nice because it's nice to get, have some height in the garden. That's why yeah. we raised it up. Because when mm. we're sitting here having our breakfast or our cup of tea, the flowers are at head height or above, so that's when you can see what the, right. what the wildlife's doing in that's your garden. That's a really good idea. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It feels yeah. really jungular, actually, sometimes. Yeah. I love the leaves on this as well. So even without the flower, it's just a really excellent plant to look at, yeah. I feel. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, but on the wildlife gardening front, we actually had um, quite a lot of black fly on this a couple of years ago. You remember this? Oh, yeah. And we were sitting in the van and a seven-spot ladybird turned up on my arm. No, sorry, the larvae of one. And we brought it home, as you do, and popped it onto one of these stems that was covered in the black fly. And I'm not kidding, but literally over two hours... The black fly had just left. Yeah, by the next day, it's yeah. it all gone. That quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how many of them they'd eaten, or whether yeah. the black fly was just like, oh god, we're not That's staying. Not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it, no, it's a lovely, lovely plant, and um, yeah. Yeah. Like it a lot. Yeah. So we've already seen like you've seen quite a lot into sort of a small space. Mm. It's even more over here. Should we have a look? 
behind here, even on your table. <laughs> you've been more pots, haven't you? Yeah, well, this is, this is um, pasque flower. Um, yeah, it's an alpine, but it's native, and it's yeah. uh, it's got a beautiful flower, hairy, silvery flower that opens early in the year. Right. Um, so on the table we have things in pots that need a, you know different conditions that we wouldn't be able to look after in the right. border, basically. Um, so we've got this is an alpine hypericum as well, which is nice. And this one is um, it's called Zalusianski. It's uh, night flowered um, or night, night scented. Flocks. Yeah, yeah, it's called. So it's a, it's got flocks flower and. Because we grow night scented plants, it brings the moths in. And then we find mm. that because the moths are in, the bats come overhead yeah, as well, which is brilliant. nice. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. And yeah. This, um, this one here um, is vanilla scented. So it's really nice. So when the sun comes out, which is not now, but when it does mm. come out, it fills the whole garden with vanilla scent, oh, which is yeah, really sweet. lovely. Mm. That's yeah. Nemesia. Um, importantly, yeah. yes, yes, the bee drinker. So all wildlife benefits from some water in the garden, obviously, mm. as you know. And this is just a really easy way of giving all the invertebrates the water they need as well. And by having the gravel um, in there, it gives them something to land on and then they can just dab at the water. Mm. And we do get a lot of bees and hoverflies coming wasps, in. Yeah. Wasps use it as mm. well. And I mean, it takes up absolutely no space yeah. whatsoever. It took... Easy to put together. Probably stuff that you probably already got in your garage for most people. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's gravel we um, yeah. had left over from the top of a couple of pots. So yeah. we just collected it up and yeah. put it in there. Because yeah. quite often people think they need to give bees, in particular, sugar water to revive mm. them. But they're quite often just thirsty yeah. for, for mm. plain water. So this just solves that problem. And where we are, we're miles away from the nearest water source. Mm. There's not a stream or a river for. Well, about a mile mm. from here. Um, so, yeah, this is really important if it's, especially if it gets dry in the summer. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I think one of our favourite plants in the garden, I think you, I'm talking for you at the same time here, is this salvia. Um, it's, this one's called Hot Lips. They are fantastic at providing pollen and nectar for all sorts of pollinators. Um, they've actually got quite long tubular flowers. It's the bees with the longest tongues that can actually get in there and access that nectar, yeah. like the garden bumblebee. Uh, but when we're sitting here and having our cup of tea, uh, we do often, often see uh, bees with shorter tongue come and rob the nectar from the side of the plant, and right. they literally just drill a hole into the flower <laughs> and just get at the nectar and then fly off. Little bee thieves, so, aren't they? They are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's called floral uh, larceny as yeah. well. So it's got yeah. a quite a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> Behind it is another salvia. Mm. Um, that's the purple one just there. That's nemorosa. Um, and again, just you can see each spike must have a hundred flowers on so mm. they're and they flower for ages so they're mm. really good all the way through the summer and behind that we've got some foxglove and we've got um alcamilla there the sort of lime green frothy one mm. and the good thing about a lot of these plants like the alcamilla for instance once it's finished flowering we just cut it all the way down mm. completely and it will grow back up and flower again so yeah. you get two flushes mm. in a year which is Perfect. brilliant um but then to space things out a little bit because we we get these sort of sudden flushes of flower throughout the year mm. Tucked in amongst it all is some um, sedum, and we've actually hacked it back. We gave it what's called the Chelsea Chop, um, which is when Chelsea Flower Show is on. We cut it down by half, and that encourages it to flower later. So by doing that, when all these things are over, a bit later on in the summer, in August time, that's, that'll be flowering then. Yeah. Um, so we extend the season in the border that way. Yeah. Good idea. It's a very good idea. Yeah, they're really good plants because you can grow them in part shade as well mm. and they don't take lots of work. You don't have to water them all the time. And their flowers are really open, mm. so a lot of the short-tongued insects can actually get in there. So you do... Hoverflies you get, love them Hoverflies well. yeah. absolutely love them, yeah. This white one here, um, this is called Galenia trifoliata and uh, it does well in, in dry shade. And it's just, yeah. it's really beautiful, almost yeah, like really butterflies exactly. coming out, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's just been getting better year on year. And it was a total accident, we didn't plan this, but the way it looks against the, the red foliage <laughs> yeah. of the Pisocarpus, it's just, it's really lovely. Um, so the thing is, because those are planted back against the wall, that's the, that's the shadiest bit. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've got Japanese anemone in there as well, which can take some shade and, and the foxglove can too. So, mm -hmm. But when the bulbs are out earlier in the year, um, none of this is up. 
So all mm. the uh, so you can get in there and you can see the primroses that we've got in there, mm. and then the daffodils have plenty of light on their leaves before they die down. So, yeah, yeah that's a, just a good tip. If you've got lots of trees and shrubs in your garden and it's getting shady, mm. then have early flowering things like all the bulbs because yeah. they they do all their business before the leaves come out. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right, what about this down here? I want to find out about your... Oh, yes, this... Uh, I can't remember where we got this lump of wood. We got it from a... We were driving along, mm. um, going to work, <laughs> and a farmer, a big... There was a big storm the night before, a couple of nights, and a big oak tree had come down. Oh, that was it, And so yeah. the farmer had chopped it up and just left a sign saying free logs. Nice. <laughs> and we thought, That's well, we know what we can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so some of it's gone into the, the pile by the cold frame, and then we just left this one here, and we've drilled lots of holes in it, and we were hoping mm. that it would be really good for some of the solitary bees. But actually what it's mostly good for are the solitary wasps. So we have loads and loads of wood wasps mm. coming in and you can see them because they actually drill their own holes. <laughs> They've got right. this long, what's it called? I've forgotten. Ovipositor, Ovipositor that's right, yeah. at, the, at the back end of the, yeah. of the wasp. And some of them are, are almost steel hard and they can drive down into the wood and then lay their eggs in there. So it's been absolutely great for that. What do you sort of think about sort of bee hotels and things? I mean, do you have any of those? We don't have them at the moment, mostly because of the orientation of the garden. Mm. I think um, to get like an, opt an optimal location would be a south facing wall, mm. which we just don't have. So we thought we weren't going to do that. We'll just provide all the other habitats. Yeah. I think with any space it's really easy to kind of think you want to do everything mm. but actually it's probably better to do a few things well yeah. than a lot of things yeah. badly yeah. or yeah. or half baked kind yeah. of thing so encourage your neighbours to do the things that you haven't <laughs> yeah. yes yeah. yes we'll tell them what to do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've heard you talking about this a lot so I think you should tell us this, this particular section. <laughs> this is my baby, okay. also known as a compost bin. <laughs> a compost bin. <laughs> we actually just replaced it, which is why it looks a bit new. Um, it's made of pallets, my yeah. favourite kind of compost bin, because they don't cost anything yeah. apart from a few screws. Yeah. The one we had before lasted eight years, um, old faithful. Yeah, and yeah, we put all of our veg clippings from the kitchen, um, all the plants we cut back at the end of the year will go into this and it does make really really good compost. Yeah. So we, uh, so I know you can see bags of compost here for seed sowing but in terms of feeding the borders we just use whatever comes out of there. Yeah. In fact it actually produces too much and some of it we have to take to the, to the allotment because it's yeah. so productive but it's just fantastic for other soil life to live in. It's like mm. a, a microcosm of soil life and you just get it's all the worms, millipedes, centipedes. Uh, we've seen springtails in there for the first time this year, which wow. I was really excited yeah. about. Um, more wood lice again, and oh, yeah. wood lice spiders like you've oh, never yeah. seen before. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about these. Um, yeah, they predate wood lice. Um, a friend calls them the, the bait bean spider because their body actually does look like a bait bean. <laughs> right, okay, so these are the spots. Yeah. And before this year, I'd seen them, but never the size that I've seen in there. <laughs> They're so, well fed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think the body was like that, and then <laughs> the head on top of that was another five mil. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, quite chunky things. Yeah. Terrifying <laughs> <laughs> if you're an arachnophobe. But no, it's great. It is totally alive. The, it's basically a wormery. There's yeah. more worm than soil. It actually forms quite a good shelf, which we've put one of our water butts on. Um, we try and harvest as much rainwater as we yes, can. Yes, this is key, isn't it? Water butts. Yeah, it's great because uh, so the, the water that goes into our bee drinker and the bird bath is actually rainwater. Mm. We try and use rainwater. So we use it from these, um, obviously water the garden with it. Mm. It's still not enough. We could do with another four of these, really. Easily. They, in a hot yeah. summer, yeah, yeah, it's never enough. But it goes a good way yeah. it does. to keeping things watered. Yeah, it's definitely worth doing in even a small garden, mm. like collecting rainwater. Cause yeah, and the, a... these are recycled as well from, mm. from other places where you've been donated them. But you can get ones which fit flush against the wall. Yeah. So if you do have a really small space, you can, you can fit them really flush yeah. and they attach straight to the pipe yeah. and then they don't get in your way at all. They're surprisingly easy to fit, aren't they? Because I remember being quite intimidated 
intimidated by it when yeah. I was buying. And I was like, I don't know what, I'm quitting as my drain pipe. This is a really scary yeah, prospect. Yeah. And then I did it. It was easy. Well, so yeah. like, You're a bummer yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Just, make, just, just, yeah just make sure you get the right size fitting. Yeah. And... What? Which, why are you bringing this up? <laughs> <laughs> I may, I may have had you had to a go few to trips it. to the DIY store. Yeah, yeah but there's, the tri- there's more to plumbing than meets the eye. The, that's what I'm the trick is but just to take the, the fitting you've got and check. Right, yeah, okay. take it. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. <Yeah. laughs> Tell me about this. It's a lovely little storage area, isn't oh, it? Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, so this is obviously just the alleyway into into the garden. It is the shadiest part of the garden as well because the mm. sun comes up and goes around behind this, uh, this is our toilet building. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't like to waste space, as you already know, and we do have a lot of pots, so we thought let's store the pots here. We actually very, uh, we touched this very little, really. Mm. So we've got a lot of spider life in amongst all this yeah. lot as well. Um, some huge house spiders live underneath this bench, which is really, really great. Um, but us being us, we also wanted a plant. So we've put this hydrangea simanii mm. up against the wall and it is clinging and is doing this really nice thing of weaving in amongst our pots, which we quite like. Yeah. Again, this wasn't intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it was a complete accident, but we didn't think it would come this far around yeah. because we thought it would go the other way looking for the sun. Um, but actually, it's just quite happy around here, and it's it so just looks great. It? Yeah. Yeah. it doesn't yeah. look like you've planned it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's another really nice thing to look out on when we're washing up. Um, it. Yeah, it's nice to see some green. Yeah. Um, and likewise on this side, I think a lot of people get a bit afraid of ivy, um, but we like to sing its praises because, yeah. again, you can see the, the cobwebs in here. Yeah. Um, every year we have holly blue butterflies, in the garden and we know they lay their eggs on ivy in the summer Mm. and so there's the the ivy at the end of the garden there but we've also seen them on this and yeah why would you not want green instead of wall yeah Yeah. do have to stop it from totally taking over our neighbor's house but that (laughs) every few weeks just could (laughs) we have some more work to do yeah Yeah. (laughs) sorry james um but yeah i just really i think that if you've got a space then why not grow something really easy up it if you haven't got lots of time and it's very forgiving stuff as well ivy you just cut it if you don't want it there so there's so many benefits isn't it as well yeah and you mentioned and you've got this quite lovely big um planter over here yeah and you mentioned this one yeah so this rose is called golden showers um, they do sort of open out and they're, they're quite lax, I think some gardeners would say. They sort of open, this is obviously a bit over now, mm. but you can see the, the stamen on the inside, which means that pollinators can get in there and get the nectar mm. and pollen, unlike with some roses that are just all petal. Mm. So we really like this. It, we've, it is a climber. We've obviously climbed it up over this sort of bit of rope. Oh, yeah. That means it can get the sun it needs because mm. it would prefer a bit of sun and this is very shady down here. But again, when we're washing up, we get to look out, particularly on blue sky days, when they happen, mm. the yellow flowers against it just looks mm. absolutely amazing. And yeah, it's just, I wouldn't not want it there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we do have a lot of bulbs in there as well. We've got yeah. muscari, which come up early in the year. Um, so yeah, they, they feel that. And then the, the sedum, the same thing, because it can deal with the shade. Mm. Yeah, it just comes up a bit later. And this appeared from nowhere. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, yeah. you know, sort of scatter seed around yeah. whenever yeah. you can. We're trying <laughs> to get more foxgloves in the garden because they, yeah. they just started appearing only a couple of years ago, so now we're keeping all the seed and yeah. Yeah, just sprinkling yeah, it just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next door, happens. yeah. <laughs> Bit of gorilla planting. So tell me what your plans are then for the, for the garden. What's, what else have you got in mind? Um... Basically, it's just looking around for any more gaps. There yeah. are still gaps. Yeah. There's always gaps. I can't see any just yet. No, there, sure are. there are. There are. <laughs> I've got my eye on this wall here, okay. which I know we've got a fig going on down here, which will get bigger. Yeah. But in the meantime, that wall needs green on it. So, mm. yeah, we're going to try and make some sort of planter that maybe sits on top yeah. and grow something up the trellis. But, yeah, yeah. That's lovely. a garden yeah. is never finished, even a small one. That's what we always say. So yeah. always I'm wondering if down in that corner, now the new compost bin's built, whether there's going to be room for a little barrel pond. Ah, oh, that would be Because we, we, at the moment, you know, we've got water with a bee drinker mm. and the bird bath, but 
I think there's something in that corner that could be yeah, done. Yeah, I think so. And, and you're right near the water butts as well. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Mm. Perfect to yeah. Tap it up. <laughs> I mean, how much planning do you put into things and how much do you wing it? <laughs> there's, a di there's a difference between what we do for our work, yeah. where we're going into a garden from scratch, is that, is that yeah. a and what we do here. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, because a, a wildlife garden is just like any other garden. Mm. You just need to decide where you want to sit, you know, where do you want to come out and have your coffee, you know, what do you need the space for, do you need mm. football and all this sort of stuff. Um, and then and then you plan from there. Mm. Whereas for our garden, we're kind of restricted in what we can do because we're empty. But then also we're just given plants all the time. <laughs> so we just, yeah, take nice plants, you know, as yeah. people offer it to us, which is great. So I, to be honest, there wasn't a lot of planning. You know, this wasn't mm. the, the plant mix that we've got wasn't something we sat down beforehand mm. and thought about. We've just said yes to plants that we think will go. Yeah. And mm. over the time we've built it up, which is just, which is really nice. A sort of mm. slower way of planning a garden can, can be really nice. Yeah. yeah. And like Ellie said earlier, because you can then spot where there's gaps, mm. you know, over the year, you know, just sort of the third week of June, there's nothing going on. Well, I know I need something for then. I would like to incorporate a couple more native plants. Okay. Because they are, they have the edge over mm. non-native in terms of mostly for sort of larval food plant. Mm. Uh, functioning um, so yeah if we can find some more gaps for any plants then we can yeah. put those in but yeah. what's important is basically filling a space as opposed to what you're filling it with as long as any flowers open and accessible by pollinators um, it's more important to just get plants in there than worry about whether they're native or not plant that's more that plants way. that's our motto yeah. yes yeah. That's it. That's motto. and i suppose yeah. like you were saying if you if, you, if somebody's if you can take a cutting or if somebody's giving away a plant it's far better to have that plant than nothing at all yeah. whether it's native or not so. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah 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 well thanks so much for showing me around your beautiful that's garden. all right we'll have to sit down <laughs> and have a cup of tea now we will <laughs> let's do that